Welcome to the Black Mage 1 to 80 leveling guide. In this guide, we will cover all of your skills as you train to be an AoE magnet better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as your spell casting goes from this to this. This guide is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy or the MMO genre in general. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for Aroma Born, level 60 for Heaven's Word, 70 for Stormblood, and then finally at level 80 for Shadowbringers. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 80. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. With that all out of the way, let's begin. Before we talk about the skills, allow me to call attention to the Elemental Compass UI element. This will contain various pieces of info useful to playing your job, with more being added as you level up until it looks like what you see here. I bring this up now, only to say I personally do not use this compass. I swap over to the simple job UI, shown here. Much cleaner and easier on the eyes for me personally. For the entirety of this video, I will be using the compass, but I recommend the simple gauge. Anyway, let's actually talk about our skills now. Level 1, Blizzard. From this point on, called Blizzard 1. Our first Thaumaturge skill is Blizzard, 180 potency spell on a global cooldown for 400 mana. The important part of this skill is granting Umbral Ice for 15 seconds or removing Astral Fire, which brings us to... Level 2, Fire, from this point on called Fire 1. 180 potency just like Blizzard, 800 mana cost, and granting Astral Fire for 15 seconds or removing Umbral Ice. Very quickly we've been introduced to the main mechanic of Black Mage. Under Astral Fire, all fire moves will cost more but do increased damage while also costing you the ability to regenerate mana. Under Umbral Ice, spells cost less and your MP regen is massively increased. The dance for all of your time as Black Mage has become use fire until you're out of mana, also called Oom, swap to ice to regenerate your MP, and then repeat. Keep all that in mind as I go over skills. I will be going over base potencies and mana costs, so when Fire 1 is costing double what I say, know it's because I am giving the normal amount, not the buffed amount. After quickly gaining the next two levels, your ability to do this dance is massively improved. Level 4, Transpose. 5 second cooldown move that swaps your stacks of Umbral Ice and Astral Fire to a single stack of the opposite element. Since using the opposite element removes your stacks, this is the better alternative. It also is useful for not dropping your stacks completely since they are on a 15 second timer. This way you will always begin a battle with at least one stack of either element. Our dance, or our new rotation, will be for quite a while the following. Fire 1 until out of mana, transpose, blizzard 1 until maxed mana, transpose, and repeat. Also note the following icons. I will be using these to represent out of mana and maxed mana in all future rotations. Anyway, be sure to spend as much of your time in astral fire as possible. This is where most of your damage is going to come from, Especially because Astral Fire buffs your fire spells to do more damage, unlike Blizzard, which is always just 180 potency. One final note on Transpose, you can use it between battles, so once you get into party content, it's good to constantly spam it between pools so you never drop your buff. 
Moving on, level 6. Thunder. From this point on, called Thunder 1. A 30 potency hit for 200 mana. Very weak, right? The big part is 18 seconds of a damage over time, or DOT, for 40 potency per hit, or tick of the server. Server takes control when DOTs tick, which will be roughly every 3 seconds. Knowing that, we could divide the DOT time by 3, and know that the DOT will hit 6 times and in total do 240 potency over the entire duration. In total, this is now 270 potency, not just 30. Assuming the DOT lasts longer than most of its duration, it is stronger than a single Blizzard cast. This makes it better to use during Umbral Ice. When you have multiple enemies, it's good to put Thunder 1 on more than just a single enemy. Be sure to never overwrite Thunder 1 with a slow cast Thunder 1. If the enemy still has time on the dot, skip it in your rotation. Otherwise, feel free to use it anytime you are in Umbral Ice. At level 8, you get the roll action Addle, the first of your roll actions. I won't be going into detail on roll actions, but be sure to add them to your hotbars somewhere, as roll actions are very useful skills to have. Level 10, Sleep. A 30 second sleep effect. Sleep causes enemies to stop all actions until they wake up and can be woken by any singular hit. The uses for this skill are not very many. If you get attacked by multiple enemies, you can sleep them to kill them one at a time. There is also one boss in a mid-level dungeon with two enemies where sleep is useful, but very much optional. The spell is so optional, I don't even keep it on my hotbar. You could keep it on yours, but beyond leveling up in the overworld and your class quests, it finds little practical use. Level 12, Blizzard 2. 50 potency AoE for 800 mana in a small 5 yarm radius around yourself, with the same additional effect as Blizzard 1. Its cast time is also very slightly faster than most other spells. It takes at least four enemies for this to be stronger than Blizzard 1, though. That isn't too great, all things considered. If you get some parties who pull a lot of enemies, it finds a little use. But since you go back into fire spells the moment your mana maxes out, you don't see it very much. But if you're in Umbral Ice and there's a lot of enemies, use it. Level 15, Scathe. This skill is not automatically obtained like your previous skills. Not only do your class quests give you some leveling gear, sometimes they give you entire skills. In future, I will simply state on screen when it's a quest skill. Just keep in mind, if you do not automatically obtain a skill, it is a quest skill. An 800 mana instant casting spell for only 100 potency, and a 20% chance it will do 200 potency. The only use of this skill is that if you have to be moving, you could still do damage. Black Mage is a turret mage that wants to avoid moving as much as possible, but sometimes it's impossible not to move. Filler is better than nothing, but where possible, do your best to only use this in an absolute emergency. Level 18, Fire 2. 80 potency in a 5 yarm radius around your target for 1500 mana. It costs 50% more mana than Fire 1, and needs at least 3 enemies to be of higher potency. It also is slower to cast, taking longer than your recast time. Arguably, 4 enemies is where you want to start using this. 5 or more, Fire away for sure. Fill in instead of Fire 1, where applicable. Also at level 18 is the Roll Action Swift Cast. This allows any one spell to ignore a cast time making it instant. This ends up better than Scathe in almost every way. Only three levels to make it an obsolete skill. Yay! Basically, instead of Scathe, use this anytime you have to move. Level 20, Magic and Mend. This is a trait, or a passive ability. The important part of this trait is the additional stack of Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. At two stacks, the damage increase and MP regen of each respective element are improved. However, Transpose will still only give you one stack of the opposite element. Things remain the same otherwise. Lots of fire, some ice and lightning, and back to fire as soon as you possibly can. At level 24, you get the roll action Lucid Dreaming. As a note, 
this does not regenerate mana during Astral Fire. Level 26, Thunder 2. At a cost of 400 mana, it does 30 potency to the target enemy and every enemy within 15 yawns of the target. It also applies a 12 second dot of 30 potency. This adds up to 150 potency per enemy hit. This means on as little as two enemies, it's worth using instead of Blizzard or Thunder 1. With this, there's almost a guarantee you'll never use Blizzard 2 again but keep it around for level syncing and just in case. An additional note, Thunder 1 and Thunder 2 effects do not stack. Only one can be applied to an enemy at one time. Level 28, Thundercloud, a trait. This trait is extremely fun. Each tick of every single target Thundercast has a 10% chance to give a Thundercloud proc. AoE Thunder 2, a 3% chance per tick per enemy. What Thundercloud does is give you the ability to cast either Thunder of your choosing for no mana cost and no cast time. Additionally, the full damage of the dot will be added to the initial hit while you also put a fresh dot on the enemy. So taking Thunder 1, it does 270 potency and then puts a fresh dot on, which assuming there are no more Thundercloud procs, and the dot lasts for the entire duration, is a total of 510 potency for that one attack. The damage adds up fast. A proc is designated on your thunder skills with a glowing border like so. With enough luck, a single cast of either thunder can last for an entire fight no matter how long, but that is extremely unlikely. Don't rely on it, but you can get tons of extra damage and extra thunder casts extremely easily. Level 30, Mana Ward. Our first real cooldown ability. 120 seconds for a shield of 30% of your max health. Use this anytime you're about to take damage, especially when it's standing in AoEs by accident. Reducing your incoming damage is really useful for squishy mages like you. Avoid any avoidable damage like always though, as many attacks, like this more bulls, cause status effects that no shield will prevent. At level 30 you will be able to undertake your first job quest to obtain a soul stone as well as your first job action. You must also complete all class quests from your guild. The other requirement is the level 20 main story quest, Sylph Management. This takes place soon after you join a grand company. This won't be an issue on normal servers, but any server with preferred status and the road to 70 buff will likely lead new players to be 30 long before this story threshold is met. Level 30, Mana Font. Congrats, you are now a fully fledged black mage. The opposite of Mana Ward, we have Mana Font a 180 second cooldown that restores 30% of your mana, or 3000 as always. Use this basically any time you are in Astral Fire and have less than 7000 mana. This will allow you to cast even more fire than before, before you run out of mana. Level 34, Fire 3. 240 potency for a whopping 2000 mana, but grants you a full stack of Astral Fire and removes Umbral Ice, not just doing one of them. This is a very important distinction, as it means you no longer need to transpose to go from Ice to Fire. This also does not replace Fire 1. It has higher potency, but also double the mana cost, while also having a longer cast time. So now our Ice phase gets shorter, and ends with Fire 3 instead of Transpose. This is going to be even more important in a few more levels. For now, get into the groove of not using Transpose to get into Fire Phase. Start with Fire 3, then go into Fire 1 spam. Level 35, Freeze. Before Shadowbringers, I would have just laughed and skipped this skill completely. Now, it is a very, very good skill. 1,000 mana to cast and 100 potency to all targets within 5 yams of the original target. It also gives you a full stack of Umbral Ice, much like Fire 3. Not quite as useful, but still really, really nice. Put simply, this is in every single way better than Blizzard 2. If you have to cast an Ice spell for AoE, 
this is your go-to. Why this skill does not just upgrade Blizzard 2 to freeze, I have no idea. Level 40, Blizzard 3. Costing 800 mana for 240 potency. Literally the same as Fire 3, but going from Astral Fire to Umbral Ice. No matter what your current state is, you will be given a full stack of Umbral Ice. Before getting this from your job quest, you will also get a trait that makes this skill so much more important. Level 40, Magic and Mend 2, a trait. Here is why Blizzard 3 and Fire 3 become especially important. A third stack of each element maximizes the potential of each while providing new benefits. When in Umbral Ice or Astral Fire 3, the opposite element spells have half the cast time. So not only is swapping elements still very cheap like always, it's now nearly instant. At this point, Transpose is only for when you absolutely run out of mana while in Astral Fire, with not enough mana to swap with Blizzard 3. If you are using Transpose, you are either out of battle, doing something very wrong, or using a certain level 50 skill we'll discuss later. An additional note is that at this point, 3 stacks of Astral Fire is a 1.8 times damage multiplier. I've not been mentioning this up till now as it's not too important for what we've been discussing here, but do remember that all fire potencies are ultimately much higher than their listed base potency due to stacks. Here is an updated opener and basic rotation. Fire 3. Fire 1. Fire 1. Mana Font. Fire 1. Fire 1. Fire 1. Fire 1. Blizzard 3. Thunder 1, and then repeat from the fire phase. You will only get 5 out of the 6 fire ones out without mana font. We also end with absolutely 0 mana. I emphasize starting in fire only because it is so powerful, but because you can run out of mana, you may want to start in blizzard first. Along with that, later on, our thunder dot is a lot more important to get out immediately. Level 42, fire starter. This trait adds a small effect on top of your Fire 1 casts. There is a 40% chance that you will gain a Fire Starter proc every time you use Fire 1, which makes Fire 3 have no cast time and no mana cost. At this point, every single time you get one of these procs, immediately spend it. It's a huge DPS boost if you get multiple procs in a single Astral Fire phase. And because getting multiple procs in a row is possible, Holding on to a fire starter proc could lose you damage. And at level 44, we have our final roll action, Sure Cast. Level 45, Thunder 3 and Thunder Mastery. This is an upgrade to Thunder 1. This upgrade automatically applies and turns Thunder 1 into Thunder 3 for all content above level 45, and will automatically downgrade to Thunder 1 for all lower content meaning no extra effort on your end, like with Blizzard 2 and Freeze being different buttons. Again, why those aren't the same button, I have no idea. The improved stats are 70 potency on hit, and 40 potency on the dot for 24 seconds, for a total of 390 potency for a single cast. The cost also increases to 400, but that is extremely negligible. Level 50, Ethereal Manipulation. Our final Thaumaturge skill is a 10 second recast for very quick movement to right next to a party member. The range is 25 yawms, which is bigger than the radius of just about any arena in the game. As you can tell by the clips I am showing, the speed and distance it covers is really, really good. If you can target a party member fast enough, it can save you in a pinch. If you ever end up having to move as a black mage, this is ideally how you want to do it. Do also know you cannot cast any spells during the movement, and have to wait to come to a dead stop before you can begin casting. Level 50, Flare. Your final Aroma Reborn skill is a powerful AoE nuke. A very long 4 second cast that costs all of your remaining mana, with at least 800 mana needed to be allowed to cast it. It is also Fire Element, so only use this under Astral Fire. Its potency is one of the few spells that has a scaling potency. The first target is a full 260 potency, and all additional enemies are minus 40% damage, or 156 potency per extra enemy. 
Black Mage AoE gets extremely confusing from here on out. Where before it was just spam fire two and fire, use thunder two once and use freeze to hit max mana and then go back to fire two spam. Now we have a lot more to deal with. To keep things as simple as possible, I'm going to give you one rotation that is pretty good. Freeze. Thunder 2. Fire 3. Fire 2. Fire 2. Flare. Mana Font. Flare. And then repeat the following pattern. Transpose. Freeze. Fire 3. Fire 2. Fire 2. Flare. If you get any Thundercloud procs, use that immediately after Transpose and you can usually skip Freeze. With this, you have a good rotation and AoE rotation to follow through your Realm Reborn patch content quests and will be built on until level 80. Eventually, you'll reach Heaven's Word and start picking up some new quests and your expansion skill set, which only come from the quests. Level 52, Ley Lines. Welcome to Heaven's Word. Your first new skill is a speed boost. A 90 second cooldown circle with a 3 yom radius and 30 second duration with the inexplicable ability to make all AoEs target it. Not really, but it'll definitely feel like it. A spinning sign will be placed on the ground that reduces your cast and recast times by 15%. Now you can throw fire even faster. This skill furthers the idea of the turret black mage. Having to leave your ley lines is even more punishing than before. Try to use this on cooldown after casting fire 3 for optimal results, since weaving as a black mage can get really messy. One additional question I see asked a lot is, does this affect teammates? No, it does not. Level 54, sharp cast. 60 second recast for a pretty decent effect. Your next fire or thunder spell, ignore scathe cause that effect is worthless, is guaranteed to trigger firestarter or thundercloud. Mostly we are going to use this on fire 1 to bait out an extra fire 3 on demand, especially once we hit level 60, so get used to that. However, it's really good for our AoE rotation. Just add sharp cast before thunder 2 and you'll likely have a thundercloud after every transpose. Level 56, Enochian but I prefer Eno Chain. This has a 30 second recast, but you're going to mostly ignore that. It's basically a passive 5% damage increase that allows for the usage of your next two skills, and only usable when under Astral Fire or Umbral Ice. At this point, Transpose Dancing between pulls becomes crucial to do. If you drop your stacks at any point, you lose this boost. It might not seem like a lot, but when Black Mage is all about damage, 5% adds up quick. Level 58, Blizzard 4, costs 800 mana, does 300 potency, and is only usable under Anokian. It has the additional effect of granting you 3 Umbral Hearts. An Umbral Heart will nullify the MP increases on your fire skills during Astral Fire. In Astral Fire, MP costs double. For 3 fire spells of your choosing, player not included, rather than 200% the cost of the spell, it will be the normal 100% cost. This means more fire casts for every time you enter your fire rotation. Be warned the cast time is a little bit longer than a normal blizzard cast however. Use blizzard 4 in umbral ice before swapping over to fire spells. Your stacks of umbral hearts are portrayed by these three needles on the compass right here. Don't bother using blizzard 4 in AoE rotations. Level 60, Fire 4. Here we go, the main meat of your Heaven's Word toolkit. Your big booms just got even bigger. For 800 mana, and does 300 potency per hit for a slightly longer cast time than Fire 1, Fire 4 is an amazing skill. The only problem with this skill is you do not refresh your Astral Fire stacks when using it. This means Fire 1 must still make its way into your rotations, otherwise you want to almost entirely replace Fire 1 with Fire 4. As such, our new level 60 opener will look like the following. Pre-Pull Swiftcast, Blizzard 3, Enochian, Thunder 3, Blizzard 4, Sharpcast, Fire 3, Ley Lines, Fire 4, Fire 4, Fire 4, 
Fire one. Fire four. Fire four. Fire four. Fire three. Mana font. Fire four. Fire four. Blizzard three. And then repeat, skipping Enochian. So things went from pretty simple to pretty crazy pretty fast, right? Let's break it down a bit. We begin with Swift Cast to be able to immediately use Blizzard 3 when the tank pulls a boss. We begin with Umbral Ice to set up a very big Astral Phase. So Blizzard 3 into Enochian to set up our permanent 5% damage up buff for every other attack we will do. Into Thunder 3 to try and get a Thundercloud Brock wall and Astral Fire. We then Blizzard 4 to get a longer Astral Phase with Umbral Hearts. We then Sharp Cast to be able to use it on Fire 1 to be able to use Mana Font immediately after our second Fire 4 to get out more Fire 4s. At this point we finally move into our Astral Fire Phase. Fire 3 to swap over and Ley Lines while we wait for our global cooldown to finish ticking. With Ley Lines down we'll be able to shoot off all of our Fire 4s extremely quickly. We then alternate three Fire 4s for big damage and a single Fire 1 to refresh our Astral Fire. After a second set of Fire 4s, we can use our Fire Starter proc to use Fire 3, and then use Mana Font in order to get two more Fire 4s. At this point we are out of mana, so we swap back into our Umbral Phase to regain our mana and prepare for another Astral Phase. From here we just repeat the pattern and use our cooldowns when they come back up. One final note before moving on, AoE. With Fire 4, it is often better to just use single target rotations on 4 targets or less. And AoE rotations becomes on 5 enemies or more. Now let's move on to Stormblood. Level 62, Between the Lines. A 3 second recast ability that will let you return to the center of your ley lines at any time. As mentioned before, Moving as a black mage means death. If for whatever reason you have to flee from your ley lines while it is on the field, you can pop this to instantly get back to it and regain your speed buff. It works really well with ethereal manipulation as you can see here. Level 64, Thunder 4. This is just an upgraded Thunder 2. Much like Thunder 3 was an upgrade to Thunder 1. Costing 800 mana, this upgrades to 50 potency on hit, and a dot tick of 30 damage over 18 seconds, for a total of 230 potency per enemy. Level 66, Triple Cast. Triple Cast does actually change our rotation a little bit. A 60 second recast for 3 free instant cast spells. We'll end up moving our Ley Lines cast back before Fire 3, so that we could use it after, to be able to do Triple Cast Fire 4s. However, some fights demand movement at very specific points, so you might want to delay your triple cast to be able to cast during that movement. Including swift cast, you have four instant cast spells every single minute. Using these at the right times means faster attacks, and possibly more attacks due to being able to use them for movement. Just be sure to use it in some way, whether it's for movement or for faster attacks. Both ways are really good. Level 68, Enhanced Umbral Hearts. Trait. Now Flare gets to join in the Umbral Heart fun. Rather than using all of your MP, you get to keep one third of it. This allows for some fun chaining of Flare if you have Umbral stacks. Do know, however, that Flare will use all Umbral Hearts that you have, and not just one. Alone, this would be a very bad trait. However, at 68 there is also... Level 68. Enhanced Freeze, a trait. Freeze will now grant one Umbral Heart upon use. This turns what was a mess of AoE into something a lot smoother. Let's take a look at it now. Freeze. Enochian if it's not already up. Sharp Cast Thunder 4. Fire 3. Triple Cast. Flare. Flare. Mana Font. Flare. Transpose. Use Thundercloud proc. Repeat without abilities and no overriding of your Thunder Dot outside of Thundercloud procs. Try this a bit on a striking dummy and it's going to feel a lot nicer than what you were doing previously. Level 70. Foul and Enhanced Enochian. Enhanced Enochian buffs a 5% damage increase to 10% damage increase and gives you a new mechanic as Black Mage. We now have Polyglot. 
After 30 seconds of having Enochian on, you will gain one stack of Polyglot. This is represented by the diamonds underneath your compass. In order to use Foul, you must have a stack of Polyglot, meaning it is essentially on a 30 second cooldown. However, even with a stack of Polyglot, the timer for the next Polyglot continues to run. That means if things line up weirdly, you'll end up with two Fouls in a row. Unfortunately, if you gain a stack of Polyglot while you already have one, you will lose that extra stack. So try using them as soon as possible. As for Foul itself, we have another scaling spell. A massive 650 potency nuke, with each additional enemy within 5 yarms taking 10% less damage, up to a max of minus 50% damage. It is best to use this when in Umbral Ice Phase as you want to use your entire Fire Phase for casting Fire Spells. In a single target rotation, just fit it in immediately after Blizzard 3 when you have it, as there is no mana cost even when you have no mana. In AoE, use it just about any time after Transpose. Just be sure you're not accidentally losing a Thundercloud proc. Our AoE rotation is short enough that you're very unlikely to lose a Polyglot stack by holding too long so keeping Thundercloud rolling is going to be a better gain and a lot more priority. If you weren't doing it before, definitely do it now. Never drop a Nokian in dungeons, so spam transpose between fights. That way you get more fouls and never drop your buffs. You'll end up doing a lot more damage this way. Level 72, Aspect Mastery. This trait makes it that when you have three stacks of Umbral Ice or Astral Fire, all spells of the opposite element no longer cost mana. Of course, Flare gets its own exception. However, uh, remember how our AoE rotation was using Transpose? Uh, let's uh, just, uh, yeah, just delete that, cross it out, and uh, there we go. Perfect rotation. Good. But I'm, uh, uh, this also comes into play with single target rotations with our next skill. Level 72, Despair. That's what I feel when I see this skill. Okay, not really. This is basically a single target flare, 380 potency and a long cast. It also costs all mana and grants Astral Fire 3. You've probably noticed that whenever you do an Astral Fire rotation, you end with SOME mana left over. Now you are free to dump that extra mana into Despair. Level 74, Enhanced Sharp Cast. So this is a very short description, but it does what it says on the tin. Sharp Cast's cooldown is now reduced to only 30 seconds. The side effect of this is that it is off of cooldown for every single rotation that we do. With it, we could do some very fancy stuff. Let's go over that now. Our new opener will be as follows. Pre-pull sharp cast. If there's no pull time, put swift cast here too. Blizzard 3. Enochian. Thunder 3. Blizzard 4. Ley Lines. Fire 3. Triple cast. Fire 4. Fire 4. Fire 4. Fire 4, Fire 1, Thunder 3, Fire 4, Fire 4, Despair, Mana Font, Fire 4, Despair, Blizzard 3, Foul, Sharp Cast, Thunder 3, Blizzard 4, and then repeat. It might seem weird to be using Thunder 3 during Astral Fire, but that's because of the Enhanced Sharp Cast. If we use Sharp Cast on Thunder 3 every single time we are in our Umbral Ice phase, we are guaranteed to have our Thundercloud proc for that position in the Astral Fire phase. Ultimately, this is a big DPS gain over an entire fight. We've also altered our first set of Fire 4s to be 4 in a row. If your spell speed is too low, you might not be able to do this, and might have to rearrange things a bit. But you should have enough just by wearing whatever gear you have. Level 76, Umbral Soul. This one is a bit weird, but also has a very obvious use. Instead of spamming Transpose between pulls, we'll just spam this. It basically has the same effect, but grants us Umbral Ice and an Umbral Heart every time we use it. So not are we keeping our Enochian up 
and gaining stacks of polyglot, we are now also being able to skip Blizzard 4 and freeze in our rotations. Whenever we finally re-engage enemies, we'll be able to immediately start blasting them with fire spells. Much safer and more consistent. Level 78, Enhanced Enochian 2. Enochian's damage buff is now 15% instead of 10%. That's it, move on. Level 80, Xenoglossy and Enhanced Polyglot. Let's start with the Enhanced Polyglot. Now you can stack two Polyglot before any additional stacks are lost, which is very useful for keeping rotational flow. Very simple but very nice. Xenoglossy, meanwhile, is single target foul. 750 potency in exchange for a stack of Polyglot. Foul is still stronger on two or more targets, but for single target, this is much better. Just replace Foul in our previous single target rotation, and you have our new rotation. It makes things even faster too, because it's an instant cast spell. One final note is that because of the additional Polyglot stack, you can sometimes end up using three Polyglot in a row, as I have been showing in these clips. It's fun to do, but not quite as useful since you're holding on to Polyglot for no reason. But to give you a reason, Xenoglossy makes for a really good movement tool. The instant cast nature of it means you can do whatever you want and still be able to attack. If you know you're going to be forced to move, you can hold on to polyglot stacks in order to be able to keep up time. Just be sure you don't lose any stacks because they are so powerful. Thank you for watching my Black Mage 1 to 80 skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. My goal is to help players improve in whatever ways I can. Take care and have fun in your adventures across Eorzea. May the power of an Anidhogs lay waste to your enemies.